What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another week of Locked On Bucks. And we've got some news today. We have got some news. The Bucks keep winning, which is the first piece of news, which is nice. They've won seven in a row now. At, I believe they're nine and zero now with Chris Drew and Giannis in the lineup. But I woke up here in Australia to some news. The Bucks have signed Boogie Cousins. This is a guy that we have discussed uh, briefly over the years, and it feels so weird that he's finally on this team. But we've discussed the Bucks' big man rotation at length. Uh, so far this season. So they have actually gone out and signed the body. So we're going to break all that down, starting with Boogie, and then we'll get to wins over Denver and Indiana over the weekend. Frank, let's Boogie. You are Locked On Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked on Bucks. I'm your host, Kane Pittman. You can hear me and see me on the show daily. Find my work over at ESPN as well. And joining me, the founder of brewhoop.com and longtime voice of the podcast, Frank Madden. For today's episode, is brought to you by Price Picks. Check out pricepicks.com and use promo code NBA or go to your app store and download the app today. Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Uh, we'll discuss Price Picks a little bit more later on. Uh, like always, we thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen of every single day. And Frank, no one loves listening to the podcast more than when there's a transaction. Nothing gets the people going like a new player on the team or a rumor or a trade or whatever it is this morning. Uh, like I said, the Bucks have signed uh, Boogie Cousins. So yes, they won two games over the weekend, but I think the majority of the interest is around this signing, what it means, what it could possibly uh, bring to the table for the Bucks moving forward with Brook Lopez still obviously on the sidelines. Uh, I'll let you go. I know you've been looking up some lineup, lineup numbers and that sort of stuff. And you know, how washed is DeMarcus Cousins? Let's just say it. That's the question that everyone has uh, on their lips here. Honestly, when I saw that the Bucks signed Boogie Cousins, I kind of, it's kind of funny that I thought this. This is not something you ever would have thought a couple of years ago, but I was like, Oh, yeah, what is Boogie Cousins now? I guess he's kind of like a poor man's Bobby Portis, right? A very poor man's Bobby Portis. Is that, is that, I mean, honestly, like when I'm trying to think what he'll bring to the table, but what was your first thoughts? Um, how would you break down the, the signing of DeMarcus Cousins? Yeah, it's funny. I mean, I shout out to uh, our uh, old basketball friend, Jeremy Schmidt, because uh, I, I just remember you alluded to it back when Boogie was in Sacramento and, you know, there there were sort of trade rumors about him that, you know, circled for a couple of years probably because of just some of the turmoil in, in Sacramento and some of that brought on by, by himself. Um, but yeah, that was obviously a very different Boogie Cousins at that point. That was the, you know, up and coming mid twenties, all-star Boogie Cousins. He's still only 31 years old, which I think probably would surprise a lot of people that, you know, he's not older uh, than that, just given how little he's played over the last few years. But uh, I think 17, 18 was his last all-star season, the, the, the year in, in New Orleans where he, he eventually got hurt. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I think this is, I would treat this as kind of a, a flyer type move by the Bucks. Um, you know, contracts become guaranteed on January 7th. Woj, in the story that he wrote about this, specifically cited that date. Uh, said it's a non-guaranteed contract. I don't think there's a coincidence about either of those two facts. So I would treat this as basically it's a six-week kind of stopgap slash audition for Boogie. I mean, you know, as probably most people that that listen regularly and follow the books closely know, they they had an extra roster spot. So they're not as there isn't another move that is required to make this work. And so I think it's just purely a fact that they've basically been playing with, with two legitimate big men, Giannis and Bobby, who are starting next to, next to each other. And, you know, I, I tweeted it. I mean, my biggest concern and kind of talking around, you know, kind of asking around today, um, you know, I, I, I would not treat this as a good sign for Brooke Lopez's impending return. Right. I think we were all hoping, especially with the news where like week 10 days ago, he had the comments to, to Shams uh, about having a target date uh, in mind. We, didn't get a, an actual date for when that would be or, or kind of where he's at. He wasn't on this this short two-game road trip. Um, you know, we'd heard vague references to Brooke progressing. But um, I think the fact that they're adding Boogie at this point, you know, for reading the tea leaves, is Brooke Lopez a week away from returning? I would say I, I, my optimism that Brooke is is going to be coming back imminently um, would be would be definitely reduced um, just, just given this news. And again, Nothing's been reported around that, but, um, you know, I don't think we've 
I think we've all been assuming they're not going to take any risks with Brooke. Uh, and my view, and whenever we talked about this, and we talked about like a week or two ago, right, about whether they should sign somebody, it's been one of the bigger topics of discussion, um, you know, sort of around the bucks here as we started the season. To me, the question has always been just, well, how long is Brook Lopez actually going to be out? And obviously the team has been very tight-lipped. And I know there's been a lot of frustration about that. I think a lot of it's just because they honestly haven't really known when, when Brook is coming back. I think backs are weird. You know, this isn't like a, you know, like a broken bone or, uh, you know, a strained hamstring or a turned ankle. You know, backs are finicky and strange and you don't know how they're going to respond to rest or treatment or whatever it might be. So um, so I think it's a flyer. He's got six weeks to sort of show what he's got. He's going to play. I mean, as we said, they don't really have, you know, a... Uh, 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 an, a preponderance of big men here. We've seen Mamu obviously get shipped down. He's not playing any real rotation minutes. And tonight in Indiana, they win playing basically eight guys. So Jordan War has also fallen out of the rotations. Shemi Ojale, who would effectively be part of the quote unquote big man rotation as a part time four, is also hurt now for the next couple of weeks. So I think the Brooks situation, and then, you know, again, we don't think of Shemi as a, as a traditional big man, but losing him as well. I think just contributes to the fact that they just don't have bodies there that they feel comfortable throwing in um, at the big spot. So I think you can throw Boogie in, um, play him at center. I, I don't think he's going to start right away, but, you know, like, honestly, like Giannis, you know, we, we were joking in the DMs. I mean, Bobby's lineup data without Giannis is just has always been a train wreck, especially defensively. You put him with Giannis, suddenly everything works, right? Um, Boogie, you look at some of his numbers. Um, the last couple of years, actually, last year, uh, actually he, he kind of, you know, the, the Clippers, I think were actually better with him defensively and they were much worse with him offensively. So as much as you think about him as an offensive first player, um, I think nowadays in the way that the NBA works now, even an offensive minded center like Boogie can sometimes kind of slow you down and, and weigh you down offensively in ways that maybe people don't always appreciate. And likewise, just sometimes having a big body who can take up space and rebound can have some upside too. So, um, I, I don't know that he's in a, be a big shot in the arm offensively. Um, I'm curious to see, you know, how much usage he's going to expect. He actually was pretty productive last year um, in the regular season with, with the Clippers and in the short spell he had in the second half of the season. Um, and so again, I think if he can just be a guy that hopefully has stayed in shape <laughs> reasonably well, um, you know, he's obviously a talented guy who, who can score a rebound, um, pretty good passer for his size as well. I think it's really just a matter of him meshing with, with the infrastructure the Bucks already have. And then very curious to see what he's like defensively, obviously. Um, you know, he's obviously not going to be aggressively switching or anything like that. So the Bucks will have to get back to being more of a kind of zone drop type team when he's on the floor. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that works. I mean, obviously the Bucks execute that very well. Their guys know how to do that, but they haven't had to do it very much this season. So yeah, I think it's a flyer. Um, I would say this, if you want to feel optimistic, don't look at Boogie's um, playoff uh, on-off metrics the last two years. Uh, the the Warriors and the Clippers in his last two trips to the playoffs were an absolute disaster when he was on the floor. So uh, if you're looking at this with the eye on like he's going to be a, a potential Brook replacement if Brook is you know out for the season or some some kind of doomsday type type scenario like that, um, let's not even think that far because the playoffs have not been kind to Boogie. They've really his teams have really struggled with him on the floor, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's a talented guy, a mercurial guy. You hope that obviously just having the culture that the Bucks have, he'll be able to fit in well um, and, you know, kind of do some of the things that he's capable of doing. And um, I think part of it is just like being big, rebounding, um, and hopefully just using his size because that's obviously one thing the Bucks just haven't had much of late. Yeah, I mean, he's a massive guy and he was always a big guy to start with. And then the injuries, he had the quad, he tore his ACL, he did the Achilles. That was the first injury he had with New Orleans, right? So when you think about all those injuries that he's had, I mean, it's just completely destructive for a guy that was pretty dynamic. I mean, this was an automatic 20, 26 and 12, basically, guy every single night. He could shoot the three. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think anyone should be having any major expectations. But I think also we've just spoken a lot about the toll on Giannis. I had the conversation with Camille the other day where he was just exhausted. And this is just a, a Giannis thing, as we discussed, not necessarily anything to panic about. But I think giving him another genuine center that can take some of those minutes and Giannis can play alongside him might be beneficial uh, for him as well. He's only missed one game uh, so far this season. So I think having a, a big will be... Uh, important and Giannis seems to uh, at least approve of the signing. We've got this tweet here. Giannis tweeted, uh, How do you make a tissue dance? You put a little boogie in it. 
And he said that his dad jokes are back. Uh, DeMarcus Cousin just quote tweeted that uh, with a couple of emojis there. But uh, at least, you know, I mean, hopefully DeMarcus is into the dad jokes. Maybe they'll get along. I don't know. But it's just one of those funny things. He Like we, like you said, I mean, this was a guy that was a genuine superstar. And because Sacramento was so dysfunctional, it was like, I wonder if we could pry this guy away from this franchise. And now um, so quickly things turned around. Uh, turned around for him. But even going back to that year in 2019 where the Warriors had all the injuries, he came in. I think he started all 30 of his games um, that he played in. And again, like he didn't shoot the ball well from the outside. He was playing alongside good players. And sometimes if you have these complementary pieces, it actually can work out in stretches during the regular season. So we'll see uh, what happens with Boogie Cousins. I don't know whether I don't know whether there'll be too many people out there uh, that are interested in any DeMarcus Cousin. Marcus Cousins props, but uh, if you are, you'll you'll be able to you'll be able to check them out with Prize Picks. It has the best NBA DFS prop game on the market. It offers more NBA props than any other DFS prop operator, and offers all the superstar players as well as bench players, only recording a handful of minutes each game. Prize Picks offers any prop you can think of, from uh, yardage to touchdowns in NFL, uh, in basketball, all the stats, the rebounds, the assists, whatever it may be. Uh, all of the users that deposit the uh, with the promo code. At NBA will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to 100 back, 100 bucks. So don't hesitate. Check out PricePicks.com and use promo code NBA, or go to your app store and download the app today. Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy. And uh, Frank, I was messaging you earlier, and you said, "Look, it's a it's a Sunday. You were on the road. You have to catch up with the football game, to catch up with the basketball, with plenty of sport on a Sunday. Of course, I don't know what TV shows you're into right now, but anyway." With DirecTV Stream, you can get it all together uh, and you can not worry about all these different subscriptions or logins that you've got to try and watch all these different shows. Uh, DirecTV Stream brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in the one place. Uh, This means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. All right. We uh, do thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen of every single day. And it is a Packers game day today as we're recording this. Uh, They picked up another win. So you can check out the Locked On Packers podcast after you're done with us. Peter Bukowski will be wrapping up uh, that win over the Rams there as well. But speaking of wins, it doesn't feel like it was that long ago, Frank, when we were discussing discussing the – uh, the the idea when the Bucks had no one playing for them that you went into every game thinking I don't think they're going to win I just expect they're going to lose and now we're back in the old it's like a comfy pair of slippers we've got our regular season slippers back on uh, obviously the schedule's been easier I always laugh when someone you post any type of stat or the record and there's always someone that's quick to point out yeah but look who they've played who, who cares you know it, it doesn't really matter I mean you play these teams through the course of the regular season they won seven in a row they beat up on the Pacers again today they got lucky with the Nuggets who are just injury riddled right now but either way it's remarkable if you look at the standings the Bucks are in fourth Frank and they're what a game and a half or something silly like that out of the top seed it's unbelievable how quickly this has uh, turned around but it's nice I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I think they were 13 and eight last year as well at the same point in the regular season. So title, title um, guaranteed. Um, yeah, <laughs> there, there you go. Um, I, it's funny. Uh, I mean, I think we looked at the schedule when they were six and eight, and you know, you could look at the the five games that come up and saying like, okay, they got to go at least four and one. You know, maybe they have one random game they lose there in that homestand, but you know, really that was a great opportunity. You know, rip off five wins in a row, and as you said, the Denver game on Friday, obviously a very fortuitous situation. You know, Bucks having had their own injury problems, now they get the benefit of that with with Jokic being hurt with a, a wrist injury, which seems to be a, a short-term thing. But Michael Porter, uh, Nuggets also dealing with a kind of back injury that is, you know, causing long-term concern. Um, Michael Porter, who's had two back surgeries uh, already in his young career, um, maybe after the season, we don't know. Um, and of course, Jamal Murray still coming back from the ACL. So obviously that was a game that, you know, you really, I don't want to say had to win, but, you know, on paper, you obviously had a huge talent, um, you know, benefit in, in that game on Friday. But the flip side is, you know, it, it's one thing when you're playing, you know, Orlando at home, because, of course, you're supposed to win that game no matter who's playing from either side. Uh, when you're playing, in, when you, you know, when you look at your schedule and you have to play in Denver, 
Uh, obviously, you're supposed to win that game given who was available for the Nuggets. The flip side is, I mean, if you can bank a win in Denver because they happen to be dinged up and Jokic wasn't playing and, you know, Porter's been been hurt, uh, you know, that's really valuable, right? Because you catch them in a different part of the season. They're a much better team. They're playing at a much higher level. That's obviously a, a much tougher game and, and you might lose that game. So, um, so yeah, I, I think obviously, you know, some different types of wins. I think certainly most of the, the homestand felt like games that you should win regardless because you're at home playing against lesser teams. Uh, I guess we can include the Lakers in that. Uh, and they got, you know, they kind of got better. I think a little more convincing as that homestand went on and then to go into Denver, really take care of business and then, uh, head over to Indiana. And, and it's so strange. Cause I mean, the Pacers are a talented, you know, really reasonably talented team, obviously TJ Warren's still out, but that said, um, you know, I couldn't help but think back, well, you know, if the Bucks had lost in the second round, if Rick Carlisle becomes their head coach, man, what would the vibe be like around these podcasts, <laughs> around our podcasts, especially watching Rick Carlisle struggle to figure out the recipe for the Pacers right now. They've been a disappointment. Um, and again, they've had some injuries, but, you know, Karis Levert's back. Obviously, Brogdon's playing, uh, Miles Turner and Sabonis, who were nothing today. I mean... I, I couldn't believe looking at the box score. I watched this game on DVR, so I wasn't watching the box score during the game. And when I looked at the box score afterwards and saw that Sabonis was one for eight and scored four points and what Turner was one for something as well um, and four, scored. Four. A, he took four one, shots. Four shots. I mean, we're used to Miles Turner just being a ghost and, you know, being invisible. Um, but Sabonis is a guy that obviously has had much better luck against the Bucks, and he's obviously a just really good offensive player. So, the fact that you throw Bobby Portis out there, you know, I think Bobby was probably guarding him most of the night. And, you know, it's basically, obviously, as we were saying, you've got two big guys uh, with Giannis and Bobby Portis. And uh, to go out and, and play against a guy like Sabonis and have that guy be a complete non-factor, um, that's obviously, you know, a big deal. And, and obviously, overall, you look at the numbers, about a 117, 118 offensive rating for the Bucks, about 100 defensive rating. Both of those are, you know, terrific. Um, and just continuing kind of the strong play and bucks, I think now are up to, depending on where you look, you know, the different places calculate possessions slightly differently. So the, the ratings differ a little bit, but I, I was looking at NBA.com. I think they're 11th in offense right now, 12th in defense. And, you know, you're like a point defensive rating wise, you're like one point away from being like fifth. Right. And obviously the flip side is also true. You could probably drop pretty quickly if you have. Uh, you know, a game where you get lit up, but, um, but once again, you know, I mean, I, it, this actually was a game where I, I would say in general, overall defensively for the bucks this year, I felt pretty good, even though, you know, especially without Brooke and without the size that we've been used to them having, I've felt like, you know, man, they, they can't play the style of basketball they want to using the kind of their physical size to overwhelm. But I felt like the, you know, they're switching their ability to kind of move between you know, zones and switching and occasionally dropping a little bit um, and and playing, you know, having Bobby and, and Giannis play center field and, and a drop coverage. It's felt like a lot more fluid. Like it, it felt like they've at least had enough continuity, especially with a lot of these guys obviously playing together during last year's playoffs and basically playing, as we were saying, the last year. I and mean, basically they played like another half season's worth of games during the playoffs last year, really high leverage. So it, it feels like even with a few new guys added in that, there's a, a fair bit of fluidity. And, and again, they may not have the talent right now defensively to just be like a suffocating, incredible defense. Um, they've definitely benefited greatly from opponent three point shooting happened again tonight, opponent three point shooting being pretty poor. Um, but if you look at the top five teams in opponent three point shooting, it's a lot of the teams are at the top of the defensive metrics, like the Warriors and the Heat and some of those teams, right? Like, not surprisingly, if, if teams shoot poorly against you from three, your defense is generally going to be pretty good the way that the NBA game is played right now. So um, especially after last year when they had bad luck, hey, I'll take it. They, they need some of that this year. Um, but I actually thought like, especially in the first half, we saw them break out the zone a fair bit. I actually didn't think the defense was, I mean, I don't know. I felt like, especially the first half, like the Pacers got a lot of good shots and just missed a lot of open shots, I would say. Um, but uh, again, you know, over the course of the game, uh, obviously they did enough. They held down, uh, the Pacers, uh, in the paint. And I think, I think this is a broken record can. I think we had, it was a huge advantage last game as well, but looking at the, the, uh, paints, uh, paints did it again, the points in the paint. Um, I think it was something like 62 to 26 or something like that. 
Um, I don't have the box right in front of me this this very moment, but um, you know, anytime, yeah, 62 to 36, anytime you're plus 26 in the paint and the other team doesn't shoot well from three. I mean, both teams shot it really poorly from three bucks, only eight out of 35 pacers, 12 out of 45. But if you're plus 26 in the paint and the other team shoots 27% from three, you know, you're going to, you're going to win that game. And um, I, I don't know. It just, it's just kind of remarkable. Just again, they, the bucks have been doing this against the central division now for three years going on three years under bud just the consistency of their ability to just win night in and night out and again you know being able to win with without a whole lot of drama um you know again we know that the there's bigger things at play than regular season games but uh, especially given kind of playoff seating concerns and just trying to you know get some rhythm with with this team as it starts to get healthy um these games are obviously important and you know i think seeing drew holiday make shots especially two-point shots didn't shoot well from three but um, 23 points on 21 shots, 10 of 14 inside the arc, which is one of seven from three, but nine assists. Thought Drew was really good. And, um, you know, Giannis, his ho hum, 26 on 15 shots, 13 rebounds. Um, you know, kind of what we expect from him and, and Pat Connaughton yet again, another good game. George Hill was, was also good for them. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I think just, you know, again, seeing the bucks kind of raise the bar a bit, um, as they've been racking up these wins is just a, an encouraging thing to see as, uh, as obviously we're, we, we got kind of, you know, as you said, kind of used to the bar being a, a little bit lower, but, but it seems like now we're seeing a lot closer to, to what we expect from this team, especially obviously with Chris Drew and Giannis beginning to get into a rhythm. Yeah. The Bucks have faced it on a pretty easy schedule here over the last couple of games. And as you said, you do expect that sometimes there'll be, a bit of a letdown. But speaking of feasts, I'm sure that everyone feasted on their built bars over Thanksgiving. There's no doubt about that. But it's here, the best Monday of the year, Cyber Monday. And built.com is the place to aim your mouse. Get at least 20% off everything delicious and healthy. That's 20% off site wide. And even bigger discounts on built boost, broth, and built swag. A brand new built bar flavor has landed just in time for Cyber Monday. It's caramel almond delight. And it delivers everything it promise. promises. Caramelized chocolate, check. Almonds, check. Delightful, double check. Be sure to get yours before they're gone. There's 150 grams of calories, 17 grams of protein. And this season, maybe you're craving white chocolate for a limited time. Get a special new Built Bar Puffs flavor, white chocolate white chocolate cheese case, cheesecake. The yummy protein treat filled with marshmallowy center covered in white chocolate. Uh, it is the season to save and give your taste buds the gift of Built Bar. Get a Built, go to Built.com. These incredible tasty new bars and 20% off everything, head to built.com, enter code LOCKED20 before it's too late. And then with that money you've saved, you can jump across to betonline.ag uh, because it's uh, it's Thanksgiving period and we all know what that means. Football, and nothing goes better with football than turkey and betting. Bet online has you covered all holiday season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this Thanksgiving. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus with the promo code locked on uh, to receive that bonus. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online, uh, we're stuffed with deals this Thanksgiving. All right, Frank. So you mentioned we, we have to, I would like to pay tribute to a player that we never do and we always get to the end of the podcast and say oh well you know pat was doing this uh pat did this should we talk about pat uh, you mentioned the fact he had 20 points against denver he couldn't hardly miss he was four for five from three he had 14 on a very lousy and then just just sad one for six from three today i just haven't come to uh expect that type of output from pat but this guy is just unbelievable some of the shots that he was finishing and marcus johnson pointed it out on the broadcast his ability to finish off glass and this has been something that has happened over the last year, there's no doubt. But I still, when he's just driving through, he'll put the head down, he'll dig the shoulder in, and I'll think, what is Pat doing here? And then he'll just flip it up. He'll flip it up off the glass, and he's, he's finishing at an incredibly high rate. If you look at uh, the numbers, I was looking at the numbers earlier via uh, cleaning the glass. The interesting thing is that his actual percentage of shots at the rim has gone down from 25% to 22% this year. Not a, not a big drop there, but it has gone down. Uh, it was actually at 37% the year before and around the same. So it, it's just funny to see his shot distribution has changed and he's he's basically just becoming this guy that is, is you know, three quarters of his shots come from the three-point line. 72% of his shots are coming from three at the moment. He's shooting very well. That makes sense. But he's finishing well at the basket. He's in the high 60s. He's always been a pretty good finisher there. But he's he's honestly almost like the perfect bud role player, I feel like. He shoots at the rim. He just chucks up threes with extreme confidence right now. He's been knocking them down, 
plays defense, will, will you know, uh, um, rebounds, does all the things that I feel like Bud, when you talk about guys, that why he loves these role players, and it was always a thing for a while, Bud has this irrational love for Pat Connaught and he plays him every single night. He plays him too much, but he really has become. Last year he was awesome. This year he started even better. Uh, just a, just such a reliable player off the bench for this team. It's awesome. And, and Mark has kind of called out. I don't know if he was calling out Bucks Twitter specifically the other day, but he said, you know, you get all these people that were talking about the contract last year. The contract's fantastic for this standard of play that he's, he's given right now. Yeah, the biggest problem is they didn't give him a four-year contract fully guaranteed without player without any options, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you could if you could have gotten for longer, that would have been better. But um, yeah, and I mean, I think the important thing here is, you know, the one of the reasons why that that shot distribution doesn't seem to be going up in terms of the the that rim stuff is because he's just getting off a lot more threes than he did, you know, ever before, right? You look at his numbers. You know, two years ago, he was at, I think, um, well, let's see, I just had it in front of me, something like, he, he was, the last couple of years, he was like 4.8 and 5.7 or, or about six three-pointers per 36 minutes. Um, so, you know, you look at that and you say, okay, well, you know, that that's, you know, those are, that's decent, right? Like that, that's, he's not shy. Um, so, sorry, 6.2 last year, 4.8 the year before, 5.7 his first year in Milwaukee. This year, he's at 7.9 threes per 30 per 36 minutes and he's shooting it at 43%. Um, so yeah, I mean, Hey, high volume at re- with great accuracy. Like I'll take that every day. Right. Uh, and then the two point percentage, um, you know, he's taking 3.1 twos per, per 36 minutes up from 2.6, uh, last year was actually higher 3.9 and 4.3 the previous couple of years, but the percentage this year, 67% on twos this year. And as you said, it, it's just something about it. Like, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to describe because they're not layups, but he's just so good at like going to his right in particular and just knowing how to go high off the glass to avoid the contest from the defense. Um, and just, I don't know, just remarkable, like how accurate he's been uh, finishing around the basket. And uh, he, he's just one of those guys. Well, he's always that? flying to the floor as well. Like when he's taking yeah. his shot, like he's just like completely off balance, but in control. It's incredible. Yeah, and I think the the I mean, I'm, he doesn't take a lot of three to ten shots, but he's shooting seventy three percent from three to ten this year, which is a, a, absurd. He's shooting sixty nine percent at the rim and seventy three percent in floater range this year, which probably includes a, a, a number of those shots that we're describing because it's not like he's taking like you know a lot of like step back you know twos in the paint or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a, a you know I mean he's just having an awesome year and. Uh, you know, I mean, the cool part is like we're not even that surprised because he was so good during the playoffs that this kind of just feels like a, a logical extension of uh, of of what we saw in the playoffs last year. So, yeah, shout out to Pat Connaughton. And, you know, we mentioned Bobby Portis um, in terms of like, you know, going against Sabonis. And I mean, an average night from Bobby Portis, only one out of three from 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 deep tonight. So, you know, that 45, 46 percent or whatever he was at is, is going down a little bit. But um, but 15 points, six rebounds. You know, this is what we expect from him right now, given the lack of depth and the minutes he's playing. Um, you know, if he can give you 15 points uh, on a you know on efficient shooting, I mean, if tonight 15 points on I think 10 shots. Um, you know, again, Bobby before he came to Milwaukee was was not really a very high efficiency score, and that's been the big difference between you know kind of pre Bucks Bobby and and the current version of Bobby that obviously has become you know. A, a a local hero here in the state of Wisconsin. So um so yeah, I mean it's just you know the fact that you can rely on those guys most nights to be doing uh again what we saw tonight is is obviously big and you know Grayson Allen only eight points but I think what he only did he only take five shots tonight didn't didn't take many shots tonight um but had had a lot of help. Chris I, I was kind of surprised Milton only had 14 um 14 points five rebounds five assists two steals uh in 30 minutes six out of 13 for some reason, he had a little run there in the second half where I, I thought he had kind of piled up the points a little bit more. But, um, you know, especially when you're not playing a lot of guys, interesting right now, basically it's the starters plus George Hill, Pat Connaughton, and Rodney Hood. Rodney Hood is now the kind of third wheel in the short rotation that we've been seeing here of late. Um, I'm sure that will be fluid, you know, for people worried about Jordan Wara not getting chances. Um, I don't think Rodney Hood is is running off and hiding with with, with that rotation spot. 
um, especially given sort of his the injury issues that he's had. But um, but yeah, I mean, knowing that that George and, and Pat Connaughton are going to give you consistent minutes, you know, every night. Um, and obviously, you hope you get a little bit healthier and, and get some of these other guys back um, sooner rather than later. Then you know you feel pretty good. So um, yeah, I mean, just uh, Bucks kind of keep on rolling and and we'll see. Obviously, the the schedule is is not going to get um, much easier here in the short term, but um, but you know I think a good good opportunity to kind of see them as as sort of measuring six as well as they've been kind of getting their rhythm back against maybe some weaker competition now. Um, a game like today, again, I don't Pacers are not a bad team. I mean, going on the road against a, a team that I think is, sh- I mean, they should be a, at least a play-in team in, in my mind. Um, I think certainly uh, you you, you got to be happy with with a win anytime you can get it um, in a situation like this, even if we've become a bit spoiled with them. Yeah, I mean these Central Division matchups are just looking at the standings here. The Bucks back on top of the Central, like they like they deserve. They've ever taken the Bulls. The Bulls are sliding. They're thirteen and eight as well. So same record there. We'll see. Obviously the Bucks don't play the Bulls. That'll be a fun matchup whenever that rolls around after the new January twenty first. January twenty first. I think I was looking at it the other day. Yeah, looking forward to that one, Frank. Yeah. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be nice if Brooke Lopez with health was healthy by then? Mm. That would be nice. It's it's like two months away. Well, the big yeah. question really is, is DeMarcus Cousins going to be on the roster when the Bucks play the Bulls? Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. Uh, the Bucks have two nights off. They play Wednesday night. They're back at home. They've got Charlotte. Um, obviously, a pretty entertaining team to watch and a team that gave the Bucks some troubles last year. So we'll see uh, how that matchup plays out. And maybe Boogie Cousins is playing. We'll see. We'll see whether he plays in that game in a couple of nights' time. But for now, uh, the Bucks have won seven in a row. 13 and 8 on the season. Make sure you check out the Locked On Bets podcast with your boy Q and Lee Sterling as well. If you're into that type of thing, uh, you can find that on your podcast feed wherever you listen to your podcast. But for now, we'll leave it there. An interesting day for the Bucks. They signed a big man. Demarcus Cousins is coming to Milwaukee. Unbelievable. Who would have thought? Uh, we'll see how this all plays out. But for now, at least, it's uh, it's interesting. And I know there are a number of fans out there that are just excited that the Bucks have got some big man uh, help on the roster so we'll see how that plays out. i, th- I mean it, it it's been kind of sad for boogie right because he spent all those years languishing in sacramento then he signs with the the warriors he comes back from the injury plays a bunch for the warriors they end up losing amidst the kd injury the clay injury in the finals um i think he had like at least one big game in the finals that year too so he goes ring chasing with the with the warriors the warriors you know, favorites, then lose mid all season injuries to the Raptors. Then he ends up on the Lakers, never plays for the Lakers, right? Ends up getting cut because of the injuries, um, the ACL injury, et cetera. So I don't think, you know, I, I don't, I don't think he ever got a ring for, for the Lakers winning a championship because he wasn't around for that. Um, but now, uh, obviously in, in, with the Clippers last year, actually did play in the playoffs a bit, uh, and now, uh, in Milwaukee. So, um, I don't know. It would be it would be fitting of uh, unfortunately of Boogie's career if if the Bucks waived him in January and then they win another NBA championship and you know he's he's on the outside looking in. But hey, let let's let's win win one for Boogie. Let's let's make that the rallying cry. Win win <laughs> win one for Boogie. Uh, not 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 not. I'm not too optimistic about Boogie Cousins being a a an anchor of a, a playoff rotation, but. Um, at least for the next month, we'll we'll get a chance to see what he's got left in the tank, and um, you know, uh, it'll be interesting. Give us something to talk about at least. Yeah, the Boogie and Bobby show. Sign me up for the Boogie and Bobby show. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how that uh, how that plays out. But uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Plenty to discuss through the week leading up to the game against Charlotte, and uh, who knows what could happen in between. But for now, for Frank and myself, we'll leave it there. We'll catch you guys tomorrow.